Peace, love, and blessings. It's your boy, Big Truck. I'm your host. I want to dive deep into this interview with Club Shay Shay and um, Marlon Waynes. You've made a safe place for the truth to be told. Go home, get three hours sleep, come back, do it again. This movie was so hard, but we knew we had something special. We knew the set pieces. We know this, that way and shit. We know, man, 200 years of comedy. We going, this is going to be. And I thought, when, when once again, my brother Sean is underrated. He came up with the idea for White Chicks. This man called me up 2 o'clock in the morning. I think this nigga was high of green tea. <laughs> he said, Marlon, we should play two white girls. I said, Sean. You need to live with green tea. <laughs> I'm taking my black ass to sleep. Next day he comes to the house. He's like, no, we got to do it. And I think it was Rick bought over FHM Magazine. Or Sean bought over FHM Magazine. Mm -hmm. And on the cover was Nikki and Paris Hilton. And he was like, these are the girls that we got to play. And he said, I was watching this movie, Some Like It Hot. Boom. So we watched Some Like It Hot. <laughs> like the Matrix. He's like... That's it. I see it. Instead of criminals, we're going to play cops. Instead of two white guys playing two white girls, we're going to play two, two black men playing white girls. Instead of the little guy in the movie that's chasing around Jack uh, Lemon's character, we're going to make him one of them big ass basketball, football niggas that love white girls, who in their whole terminology, man, it's snowing in here. <laughs> who says it snows in April, man? You know, look, look at that big white one over there. That's the abominable snowman. There was a character me and my brother used to do all the time. So that's who we hired, Terry Crews as. Right. And then all the girls, the dance numbers, we knew. We knew, and I, it's so much so, I had such a good time. I still found time to hang out with the cast because I loved all those girls. We had such a good time. Where Marlon and Wayne's can just use their gift. Boom. And by them being in the comedy world, the comedy field, it comes naturally. Then having a big brother, Keenan Wayne's, how he breaks off and lets his brothers and sisters have range. See, that's the thing. Being able to be in a position where you have range and everything that you make, that you accumulate, that you generate stays in-house. Wow. And um, we knew that was going to be a special movie. And, you know, to this day, people like the stigma of you wearing a dress and yes. the white man got you wearing a dress and nothing. No, no, man. You got it twisted. The white man got me wearing a dress. I didn't do this to try and get in Hollywood. This was something that we created because we said this would be funny. Right. Black people, black artists, stop minimalizing your creativity. We should do it all. Physical comedy, we should do drama, we should do, you know, romantic comedy. You gotta do slapstick, you gotta, we should be able to cover all oh, forms man. of our expression of comedy because white people don't do that. White people don't sit there and go, man, Look at look at Dustin Hoffman wearing that dress. Robin Williams. Wearing, wearing a, look at look at Robin Williams wearing a dress. There you go, Robin Williams wearing a dress again. Did Dustin Hoffman look win at the top? He won. Did he win? A Black people get screw, skewered and scrutinized. White people win statues. You know, but now, even over the past years, we know the rituals. Okay. So you really have to pay attention to what he's saying. There, there is rituals of the black man wearing a dress. So we understand that. But he's coming at it from a different way, you know, of exercising your talents if you are talented. But even if you are talented, you know how far you choose to take things. You know how far. 
you're going to go with it. And do you see any white people screaming that about them? Black people, we have been so hurt and so damaged through slavery and all that we've been through that we think we have to uphold ourselves a certain way. We, the best way we can uphold ourselves is to support each other. Don't be crabs in a barrel trying to break each other down. They do that. It's, it's been in our psyche for mm -hmm. years. When does it stop? When does it stop? It's been a, this is what we do. We're going to use our airwaves to break each other down and to the, build each other up. Nah, man. No, that's not why we wear dresses. Ain't a gay bone in my body. Gayest thing about me is my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But and, and honestly, and, and not to say it, but I'm not a whole bunch for bother. I got gay friends. I'm comfortable enough as a man that I can wear a dress and still feel like a man. Right. I could, I, I, I'm doing comedy. So I'm going to continue to do comedy. And when you do it right, you know, you know when you do it right. You know why black people ain't ro mad at Robin, uh, Robert uh, Downey Jr. for doing the character in Tropic Thunder? Because he was funny. He was funny. He didn't downplay black people. He just did the black guy. He felt like he was in character. Right. And it was funny, and it came from a good place. Right. So black people ain't mad at that. It wasn't like he was making fun and mockery of us. Right. When we did White Chicks, right, mockery is the greatest form of flattery. You want to tell a good joke? The person that you're making fun of, they should laugh the loudest. You know who loved the White Chicks the most? White people. Oh, white Chicks. Black people loved it too, but that was why the movie is a classic movie. He's making some good talking points. You know, this is his truth. This is his story. This is his side of it. You know? And, and doing conversations and reviews, giving our, our take on it. This is what people don't know. This is what people don't get the chance to see and hear. You want to hear the truth, hear from the horse's mouth, hear from the person themselves. We live in a day and age where you have a large number of black folk that hate on each other. And we see that shit. Unnecessary hatred towards one another. The most hatred is not even in the entertainment industry. It's in relationships. Is that we see a large number of black men hate on other black men. We see a large number of black women hate on other black women. But nobody don't want to call that out. That's where you see your most hatred work being done. It's sickening. Distasteful. It's fucked up and it's wrong. You hating on your brother, your sister for what? Especially when they ass don't even know you. Mm. It's sad, you know, that we haven't done a sequel. But see, there's a difference between we we do sequels and when they do sequels. And I'm not that guy to be like white man, this and the you know, I don't complain. I just do my work, man. Right. Right. I do. I, I'm too busy creating and being a force to sit there and lick my wounds and look at doors and beg them to throw out a bone. Would you be willing to do a sequel? Yeah, but you this is to go over when now. Tom Cruise do a sequel to a hit movie, they go, here's 50 million dollars with 50 percent of the back end. And niggas do a sequel to a movie like, can you do the same movie for half the budget and you make a quarter of what you made the first time? <laughs> what kind of math is this? Didn't you? If we're doing a sequel. Wasn't it successful? I got to make a bigger, better movie, and I'm not going to cheat the audience. I'd rather not do it and let the classic just be a classic. Let it marinate. Right. And in the meantime, I'll create something new and create a new classic, and we'll form a different business based on that. But if you want to bring somebody back to a classic thing and a classic franchise, and you got to make it bigger and better, then I can't, I can't creatively marginalize myself by the financials not adding up. Like how Steve Harvey stole Mark Curry's jokes. To anyone? 
it's just like rap battling and a person you rap you battling someone and they use somebody else's lyrics in a rap battle like motherfucker really you really fixing to sit up there and use somebody else's lyrics in a rap battle and think no one ain't gonna catch that shit that shit should be a crime too if you can't write your own music and you can't come off the dome you're not a true MC the truth don't need motivation I'm just saying I can't punch your joke and gift you that right. I go watch comedians sometimes right. if I'm watching your set and you about to go I go hey you know you should try this right here but but all right good I don't go I don't I don't get in there stole my joke that's why for me now if it ain't personal, I ain't doing it. Right. I do sets that's about my pain. And I go, what's funny about my pain? Because it's part therapy and it's part, that's where the best right. humor comes from. And so you can't steal my pain. You can't. And with that being said, don't let no one steal your pain. Don't let no one steal your joy.